Hello guys, my name is Pius Katsos and today we're going to talk about the JSON columns that introduced in Entity Framework 7. Now let's take a quick look to our project. I have a console application. I have two entities, a person entity with an ID, a full name and a pet. And the pet has a name and an age. And then in my persistence folder I have some configuration about uh, those two entities and uh, an app DB context and I have enabled the sensitive logging. Okay, now let's talk about JSON properties. Uh, as we saw in a previous video, we could already, before Entity Framework 7, store entities as JSON and then retrieve them as objects. And uh, the way we do that is uh, by creating a value converter that converts, uh, in our case, an allable pet to a string by serialize that and vice versa when we need to read that and uh, then the only thing we need to do is to say that uh, the pet property has conversion and then we pass the converter that we made and that uh, worked and still works fine so if I go to my program.cs I have already the code to create uh, two people with uh, two pets let's uh, run that really fast Okay, we can see and uh, some SQL because of that uh, sensitive logging. So if I go now to my database and uh, go to people and uh, click the edit data, as you can see, we have uh, two people with the same name because I'm too lazy and two pets, one uh, named pet with uh, an age of 10 and one named pet again with an age of 8. Alright, let me stop the app. So, if we already had that, what's the deal about the new JSON columns? Okay, now let me try to do that. Let's remove that code and, uh, and the save changes. And let's try to take a person and let's say that we want um, the first person, first or default that has a pet named uh, pet so pet name equals with pet and now let's print that person so control dot right line and let's serialize that so json serializer dot serialize that person as we know, you have uh, one person with a pet named Pet, and now let's try to see what will happen. And as you can see, we get an exception uh, saying basically that uh, Entity Framework uh, don't know how to translate uh, that expression over here, and that's because our pet is stored as JSON. So what we get with Entity Framework 7 uh, First of all, we don't need that value converter anymore only, The only thing uh, we, we need to say is that uh, Builder.owns one pet And we also need to pass an action that uh, we will perform the configuration of that pet So that will be our own navigation builder and uh, we just need to say that we need that to be to JSON okay and now we don't even need to create a migration I will just to show you that nothing will change so let me go and do that okay and now let's go to our migrations and uh, see the new one as you can see nothing changed and that's because in our people table the pet will still have one column and that will be uh, just plain uh, text and as you can see from our previous migration uh, the column time is nvarchar max so let's go back to our program and now let's uh, see if that uh, link works so let's debug that and as you can see we get the person with uh, a pet called pet and also you can see 
how on the frame one translated uh, that uh, link query to work with SQL. Another new feature that came with Entity Framework 7 and uh, I really liked and um, I think that can become very helpful is that now we can out of the box to use the order by extension method uh, without the need to pass an expression but just a string that represents the property name that we want to order our output by. Maybe I will do a video in the future about that but anyway that's all I have for this one. Thank you for watching and have a nice one.